ago, I officially announced that moving forward, I will be riding for both SM Bikes and Fit Bike Co. And with that, I first of all want to say thank you to the enormous and overwhelming amount of positive support that came from that. But I also wanted to talk about how Fit Bike Co. fits into all of this because I'll be riding an SM frame with a lot of SM parts and some Fit parts in there. But the way Fit fits into this is that. I'm excited to announce a new series that I will be doing where I will be taking a brand new complete bike and upgrading it as someone may actually do it in a practical way when they buy a complete bike. So the first episode in this series is me unboxing and building this bike as well as telling you a little bit about it. So first of all, we got a bunch of staples on this box that we need to get out. And while I take these out, I want to tell you guys about something that I noticed on this box too in that it says the tools that are required as well as the height that is recommended for this bike and I thought that was a pretty cool touch that we see on here I don't see all I haven't seen all complete bike boxes so that may be totally normal but either way I was stoked to see it on there this is the fit park medium MD this is the 20 inch and let's just Fast forward or cut to me having all these staples out and getting the bike out of the box. Very simply, the bike just slides out and has all of its packages here. There is a chain guard in the box as well as the gyro cables and another small box. And that is everything that is in this box. Right now, all that you really need to do in this process is set aside some loose parts and take some of the packaging off of here. Another thing I wanted to say while I'm doing this, this stuff is thank you to everyone who used the discount code to pick up something from SM or Fit and use the link at the same time because that helps me out. You may be getting a discount too, but it also helps me out at the same time. Front wheel separated. I'm gonna set this aside. Oh, there's actually already brake cables on here too. And the first step in this process that I'm going to do to make this easier on myself is installing the seat and seat post. So this is kind of a how to build a complete bike out of a box, as well as introducing my series. So the seat that comes on this is a fit seat that is a combo with the seat post and I'm just gonna slide it into there and we tighten that with a six millimeter Allen. Very, very easy. And now I am able to get this thing on the bike stand to continue with the process. All right, we got the bike on the stand. Shout out to Park Tool. Makes it so much easier to work on these things. But I think the first thing I'm gonna do is get the handlebars onto here. So we have a couple more packaging things that we've got to take care of here. The packaging around the stem and the head tube on the bike. And speaking of head tube, this has a 75.3 degree head tube angle on it and a very short rear end. We just keep talking about geometry here. It has a 12.6 inch rear end on it and a 20.5 inch top tube length is why it's medium because it's medium length top tube. And we've got the integrated headset. There's a mid bottom bracket, a lot of the stuff you would expect on there. Top load stem and the handlebars here have an 8.7 inch rise with a 29 inch width. And of course I'm going to struggle because it wasn't a struggle, would it be me? The fork offset is 25 millimeters and the sprocket, speaking of 25, is 25 tooth. Okay, handlebars and the brake lever is already on there as well. So one thing about this build that I have not yet talked about is the fact that it is not a full chromoly frame, fork, and handlebar. And that is something that I have no doubt been an advocate of talking about since I started talking about and recommending 
bikes for people to buy. And I wanted to be straightforward about all of this because it's definitely something that I felt very strongly about. This bike has a chromoly front triangle and it doesn't say anything about the handlebars or the forks. The cranks are chromoly. Speaking of geometry, these are 165 millimeter cranks. And this is somewhat the purpose of doing this whole entire series is to, to ride this thing for real and see if and how it holds up as we upgrade it over time. So this is me telling you right now that I will be giving honest feelings and honest recommendations on this after I've ridden it for an adequate period of time. We've got a closer look here and we can put the handlebars on top load stem. The first step is just getting the bolts finger tight. And before we go super far with that, you can see, maybe you can see here, these do come pre-greased, which is always a great thing to see. And so to continue this whole full chromoly conversation, I wanted to make sure I brought this up and was fully transparent with all of it because I never want anyone to feel like I'm, you know, going back on my morals on this concept or this topic or breaking what I feel just because I'm being helped out by a company. And that is why I'm holding back full thoughts on this until after I give it an honest ride and try. And I don't think that they would have sent me this bike with the intent of doing this series if they didn't believe in it either. When you're doing this and you're getting closer to having them fully tightened, there's a pattern that you're gonna wanna follow as you tighten things. You always wanna make sure that there is an even gap on the front and the back of the stem, meaning that the gap you see here between the top cap of the stem, the plate, and the main part of the stem is exactly the same gap as what you see on the back side. And another thing that you wanna make sure that you pay attention to with tightening your stem is that you have the knurling on your bars centered in the stem. So you can do that by going too far on one side, seeing it stick out, going back in, going too far on the other side and seeing it stick out, and just trying to make sure that you get to the center. You can also look in the gap and see where that knurling sits in your bars or in your stem. And then from here, what you're going to do is you're gonna start in one corner, tighten down. Then you're gonna to go to the opposite corner, tighten down. Then you're gonna go across on the same side, tighten down. Then you're gonna to go to the opposite corner again and tighten down and across. And you're gonna repeat this until your bars are tight and there is an even gap all the way around. Right now, there's actually not an even gap. I'm gonna make sure I can turn it here so you can see. You can see there, smaller gap on this side than on this side. And the way that we fix that is by loosening the side that has got a too big a gap. When we tighten up the side that had too big of a gap, and we keep going back and forth with this until there is an even gap here. And once we get it snugged back up, because that pattern really helps and matters the most when we're doing our final tighten, we have our gap even, the bars are centered in the stem, and now we do our same pattern to finalize the tightening of this. Corner to opposite corner, crossed on the same side, back in the opposite corner of that. I'm not gonna finalize this yet because I don't know that the bars are exactly where I would want them. In this process too, we can go ahead and grab our upper cables. And it looks like they sent upper and lower because what we see here on our lower is that it's this teal, aqua, whatever color that is, and the cables that we have for the top are black. So if you wanted to swap them out, you could easily. Another thing we need to pay attention to is that there is a short and a long side on this. So we wanna make sure that our cable is oriented in a way that puts the short side closer than the other one. 
And now that I've swapped the direction of this cable in the brake lever, you can see short side is on the bottom, longer side is on the top. Put the shorter side in our gyro plate on the inside closest to the brake lever. And then we put the longer side on the further away part of that. So at this point, I'm just gonna slot these cable ends into the gyro. It's pretty self-explanatory how you do that. And while we're on the front end of this bike, let's go ahead and grab our front wheel here and put the front wheel on. So yes, this does have a 3 8 male axle, but this is actually a sealed front hub, which is pretty awesome to see on a complete bike under the $500 price range. It's a 2.4 tire and the PSI rating is 60 PSI. Now we'll take out this spacer here which goes into the forks and keeps them safe during shipping. An important thing to note here is that this front wheel does have the slot washer, which means that when it goes into the fork, you wanna make sure the slot of that goes into the slot on the forks. We take the tool here, to make sure that our wheel is bottomed out in our dropouts, meaning that it's all the way seated. And then we can tighten that down. All right, so we can set that aside. Nice and smooth spinning there. So come back a little bit and we see our cranks are here with no pedals on them because we have this other box that comes in the bike box. Open this up and we'll see that it comes with, oh, look at me, not opening enough boxes to see that there is actually a matching blue upper cable in this box. So that's the thing, all of our reflectors and here we have plastic pedals that come with these. As well as in here we have a cable tie, some washers, and the owner's manual as well as a build your fit guide. This is actually kind of cool. So in this box, if you were to need it, there is a guide for putting your bike together as well as a QR code it shows you how to actually build your bike and it gives you a link there as well. It shows you all the tools required in the order to do it in. And one thing to always make note of is that when you're tightening your pedals down, if your bike is right side up, they will always tighten forward towards the front of your bike. So once again, these are 165 millimeter cranks, which is a change for me. So that is something I'm kind of curious to check out and try out and their chromoly with that mid mod bottom bracket in there meaning is a sealed mid bottom bracket okay i've got my pedal wrench and i actually have to correct myself i'll probably have edited it out at this point but i've been saying throughout the video that these rims on this bike are double walled it's the fit s1w rim which is actually a single walled rim both front and rear so that is something we're gonna put to the test as well to see how this actually does when I really ride it and see how long these rims hold up. And this is gonna be part of the process of this series in just putting this bike to the test for real and seeing how it holds up. So all we've really needed so far to build this bike was a six millimeter Allen, something to cut the packaging with, a 17 millimeter socket or wrench because there's no pegs right now in order to tighten the front wheel and the rear wheel looks to be a 17 as well that pedal wrench and then i use the five millimeter allen on the brake lever to adjust where it actually sits <laughs> So here we have the complete Fit Park medium bike. And right now I feel is a perfect time to give my first impressions of this bike as a whole. But to do that, I feel I also need to ask the question, what should be expected from a bike in the $430 price range? Well, we'll take a look at the wheels, 
Single walled rims seem to be pretty normal at this price range. You may find a bike here and there that has a double walled rear rim, but for the most part, single wall is normal. When it comes to the hubs, sealed front and rear hubs definitely isn't super common at this price range. You may get one being sealed, but not the other, but to have both being sealed is a definite plus in this price range. Cranks and bottom bracket, pretty normal. If you see a bike in this price range without a mid bottom bracket, I would definitely steer clear of that, but three piece chromoly cranks, totally normal here. When it comes to the frame, fork, and handlebars not being chromoly like I talked about, you don't see a full chromoly bike less than around the mid $500, even upwards of $600 in some companies' lineups for where full chromoly starts. So that's not even close to being expected at this $430 price range. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, there are some things that I think about whenever I think about riding a bike with these specs for an extended period of time. But that's kind of the whole point of this video series is to just do exactly that and see what happens. I think about single walled rims and whether or not they'll hold up to my riding and it's something that we'll find out about. But I think that it's a cool concept to take a brand new complete bike and then upgrade it the same way someone who buys a bike like this or this bike specifically would in their journey in BMX because when you look at a bike in this price range and the specs that are on it, the target audience for this bike is someone who's either just getting into BMX or maybe coming back to it. They're upgrading from a Walmart level bike, not somebody who's been riding for 15 plus years and needs like the best that there is that you can get. So I'm excited to do this and I think that when it comes to the specs on this bike, it is definitely adequately specced and may even be a little above some other bikes in this same price range in certain aspects. Another thing to bring up here is that these blue gyro cables on here were actually a mistake by the factory because Chris Muller wasn't able to be over in Taiwan for the process of these being built due to COVID. So that is why the black gyro cables are included in the box. They were supposed to be black from the factory, but because they weren't, you get an extra set of gyro cables in the box if you get specifically this model, the Fit Park Medium, in black. And I think that's almost kind of a bonus. And it just goes to show the, the level that Fit and s and in the building are willing to go to to make sure that stuff is right for you. So I wanted to make sure that I hit on that. And with all of this being said, the Fit s and websites have all of the parts that you guys can pick from for what I should upgrade next. I'm going to try to do this according to the comments. It's going to be a little difficult because there's going to be a lot, but I think it'll be really fun to have like an audience upgraded complete bike throughout this process and just see how things go. So on that note, I'm gonna hold back any kind of judgment or recommendation for a bike like this one until after I've ridden it for an adequate period of time, just like anything else that I've talked about in videos. But with that being said, I know some people don't like to wait for that, and I know that some people may not feel they need to wait for that because they're looking for a bike for their 12-year-old kid or something like that. So if you do intend on picking up a complete fit like this one or anything from Fit's website or anything from s and website, make sure you use the links in the description and the code BRANT in all caps to save 10%. It is amazing that that opportunity is available because it also helps me while helping you and I love that aspect of it. So let's get into this series. I'm gonna be riding this bike tomorrow at Ray's and I'm super excited for that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe so you make sure that you are tuned in for the next episodes in this and others. And hopefully that'll mean we'll see you tomorrow for another video. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Fit and SM. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.